Feel the waves cut through me Hypnotized By the sounds I'm breathing in Hold tight, hold tight Chemicals collide Hold tight, hold tight Hold tight Dripping light hey what's up guys welcome back you are watching for take i was using the latest hot picks update nothing was 1.1.4 from the last few days but finally paranoid android team has released its android 13 base alpha 1 topaz build for the nothing phone one so today in this video we'll see the detailed flashing process along with the full review of the rom with its features what's working performance cp throttling bugs and the issues all the points are discussed in the detail with the proper timeline so you can jump to the each part using the timeline and can decide whether you can use this rom as a daily driver or not but before proceeding if you are new to our channel please do like and share this video subscribe our channel press the bell icon for the notification of our upcoming content for the nothing phone one because we will review each and every custom rom and their updates along with the regular updates of nothing os now without further ado let's get started on a new adventure Let's start with the installation of Paranoid. Before flashing, please confirm that you are on the latest NothingOS 1.1.4 normal or hotfix update. You must need the PC with the latest fastboot and ADB drivers installed on it. You can refer how to install fastboot drivers from the YouTube. There you will get lots of video regarding that. Download the ROM from the link on under the video description. Only use the fastboot flashable zip which ends with the image.zip file. Because on the stock OS we did not get the TWRP recovery to flash the recovery flashable update zip, then transfer the file in the PC. To flash the ROM we need the unlocked bootloader. You can refer to the video guide how to unlock the bootloader given in iCard. After unlocking the bootloader keep the USB debugging enabled. Now power off the phone and press volume down plus power button to boot the device in a fast boot mode. Once phone booted to the fast boot mode connect it to the PC. Now head over to the PC. I assume that you transferred the paranoid android zip in the platform tool folder or on the desktop of your PC. Open the CMD window in the folder or inside the platform tool folder where your file is located. Using the shift plus right click of the mouse select the open command prompt here from the drop down menu. Now type the fastboot devices to check whether device is properly connected or not. Now type the fastboot update and drag the file in the CMD window to locate its location and hit enter. You will see the flashing of ROM get started while flashing phone reboots into the fastboot D mode so don't disturb the phone until flashing gets completed. Once you get the flashing finish notification in the CMD, phone reboots into the recovery screen asking for the formatting of phone. Here use the volume key to select the option and hit enter by using the power button. This process needs only at the first time of flashing. This will wipe all the data on the phone so keep backup. That is phone booted to the paranoid android boot animation. Once booted go through the first time setup process so we booted to the paranoid android launcher. Now let's check out the about phone section. So here you can see this OS is based on the android 13 with the new android 13 easter egg which can be accessed after dialing the dial to the 1 pm in the clock. Security patch is of September 2022 kernel version is 5.4.197. Build date of this ROM is 15th October 2022. As this is the initial alpha 1 build, we will now check all the basic features are working and at last we will see what's not working or the bugs so stay with us until the end of the video. Basic features like the Wi-Fi and the Wi-Fi hotspots are working with the 5 words along with the 6 words network option. Dual SIM OLT networks are working with the HD calling. Call recording function is available, it's working and call recording are available under the call log. Auto brightness is also working without the issue. NFC is working. GPS location is working with the good accuracy. Stereo audio from the speakers and the earphone speaker is also working good. You can set the fingerprint and it's working blazing fast same as the stock ROM. Vibration and haptic are the same as the stock nothing OS. Now let's check out the camera. ROM has the stock camera application. It's working. It has both the video and the camera working with the minimal features like the snapchat emoji inbuilt, barcode scanner, HDR mode, face retouch etc. Except this we didn't get any advanced features so I used a Gcam MGC build. 
Here features like the night mode, portrait mode for the front and the both the back camera is working. Ultra wide mode is also working but it has only two ultra wide modes. In the video recording slow motion is not working it's causing the forced close of camera application but the time lapse is working good. Panorama and the photosphere mode both are working well. In the video recording there is no 4K 60fps recording available. Camera quality is not tested for now. I will report that in another video but it seems ok in a first glance. I tested all the sensors like the accelerometer, light, proximity, magnetometer, compass, gyroscope all are working except the barometer because it's not available in our device. Using the device info application I check all the features especially vibration, ear proximity, microphone, ear speaker, multi-touch all are working without the issues. Now let's check very important part safety net. So safety net is passing here so you can use all the banking and security related applications without the issue. Another great news is that wide one security is of L1 so you can run Netflix and Amazon Prime like online media streaming applications at the full HD resolution. Data on the ROM is encrypted so no worry about the personal data even if your device got stolen. No one can decrypt your device without the pins or the passwords. ROM has the unlimited photo backup for the Google Photos. Hey Google voice activation is working on the screen on mode. Overall all the major functions that needs to use the device daily are working well. Now let's check out the feature comes with the ROM. As a pair on our Android is the AOSP build we didn't get much features but some basic customizations like the always on display is working. You can find that option under the display and under the lock screen setting. ROM has the display color modes like the natural, boosted, saturated, adapt to. Especially I like the boosted mode which gives the punchy colors. Smooth display toggle is available which has the adapt to 120Hz mode which helps to give the smooth device users experience. ROM has the wallpaper and style setting but it didn't have the pixel wallpaper. It comes with the some stock device wallpapers. It has the themed icon setting and it's working good. Other all the pixel device gesture features are available like quickly open camera, system navigations, one handed mode, lift to wake the phone, playback control all are working well. ROM has the inbuilt OT updater so next time when you get the OT update you will get the notification regarding the updates and you can flash them right from the OT app. Another setting called as the glyph interface is available in the system setting. This signature feature of nothing phone one is working or not that I will tell you in the bug section of the video. Except this feature will not get any of the customization as this ROM is the pure AOSP. Now we'll see the performance of the ROM. So after flashing the ROM device felt very smooth and fluid more than the stock ROM. Actually stock nothing OS is also very fast but it has some lag during the heavy task. But on this build you will not feel the single lag or the slow performance. Everything is smooth and fluid. After testing the performance using the Geekbench I got the score of 517 for the single core and 2316 for the multi core. If you compare these results with the stock Nothing OS on the last hotfix update, they are significantly lower. Nothing OS hotfix 1.1.4 has 694 and 2636 respectively. For OpenGL GPU drivers I got the score of 2410 while for the Vulkan graphics I got the score of 2541. These results are good as compared to the stock nothing OS overall though the numerical values are low for the Geekbench test but in the actual performance we will not face any lags or the issues. But for the CPU throttling ROM disappointed me a lot when I ran the test for the 23s with the temperature display kept enabled. After running the test for the 8 minutes I got the score of 76% of maximum CPU throttling which is very bad as compared to the stock ROM. Stock nothing was gave me 92 to 94 percent of CPU throttling every time when I ran the test for the 5 minutes. So this needs to be fixed by the paranoid developers to maintain the CPU performance in the heavy task to avoid down the performance due to the CPU throttling. Next I tested the touch sampling rate to compare it with the nothing was. But here I got the same touch sampling rate. I got the less dotted lines which confirms that the display has the good touch sampling rate on the paranoid Android. Similar to the stock nothing was 1.1.4. So all the aspects has been discussed. Now let's check out the most important part that is the bugs or the issues. As this is the alpha build you may face more bugs than I will show you here. So first one is the screen glitch. While using the phone you may feel some graphical glitches randomly while using the phone for the fraction of seconds. 
which automatically disappears but at one point it completely stuck at the full screen glitch like this which got solved only after rebooting the device. The next major bug is the no audio as decodec support and no audio in the Bluetooth devices. I tried to connect my Oppo Echno M31 earphones and it got connected well showing the LDAC codec support but under the developer option setting all the codecs like the SBC, ACC etc are not visible. After playing the media, I can't got any sound in the earphones. I checked the connection and though the Bluetooth device is connected, still I can't able to hear the sound. I tried to switch off the Bluetooth A2DP offload, still it's not working. So here comes the Nothing Phone 1 Glyph interface, we will get this setting under the setting and system. Here you will not get any of the Glyph light setting for the different ringtones and the sound, flip to Glyph or the Google Voice command interactions. But only two options are available like the battery level and the charging dot. Brightness ladder is available to change the glyph light brightness. At this early stage they are able to use the glyph light for the basic functionalities. So in the upcoming future it will be definitely available for the more content for the device. This is all about the new paranoid android for the nothing phone one. If you can withstand with the some graphical glitches and the bluetooth issues. You can use this rom as a daily driver. Battery life is not tested yet, I will report it with the community post soon after 2 to 3 days of battery cycle. As ROM is in early stages, so we need to give more time so all these issues will get sorted. I will create the another video soon for how to revert back to the stock nothing goes if you are already flashed with this ROM. So if you think I help you through this video, then please do like and share this video, subscribe to channel, press the bell icon for the notification of our upcoming content. Until then signing off, take care, bye bye. By the sounds I'm breathing in Hold tight